everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you five tips to make yourself the most desired follower in the room. 95% of my students are women, so I teach these concepts all day, every day, and I watch how over time they really do improve my students' following and their dancing. Before we get into the video, I just want to quickly remind you to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos like this one. Now let's get dancing. But you know that I'm not kind of girl that would do anything that would break your heart in two. Okay, so we're ready to improve our following. Item number one, and arguably the most important thing I'm going to teach you today, relax your arms and hands. I say this about a hundred times a day, and that's how important and fundamental it is to being able to follow well. So I want to just keep my hands with the leader, and because my hands are connected to the leader, I'm just going to follow them with my feet and my body. I don't need to push, I don't need to pull. If I am connecting forward or backward, uh, in relationship to the leader, those actions are going to be with my spine and not with my arms. Using your arms to create these actions makes you feel very heavy, even if you're a small person because you're adding a lot of weight by engaging the muscles. So we really want to keep them nice and loose and relaxed. I frequently tell my students, act as if there are no muscles in your arms, that they're just bones. Which brings me to my next point, which is when the leader brings our hand up to turn us, we want to do what our arm would do if it had no muscles. If the leader pulled my middle finger straight up, what would naturally happen is my elbow would fall down toward the floor. It would not do that. But we want to keep this elbow down and in front, and then when we're turning, we keep applying that technique of just following our hand. Wherever our hand goes, that's where our body and our feet goes, and that's enough. If when he lifts our hand, our elbow goes out, a few different things are going to happen. One, you're going to end up having to direct yourself because you've now disconnected yourself from the leader. Two, you're probably going to get off balance because we don't have the, the naturally forming axis that we get when the follower keeps her elbow down. And a lot of times you'll end up hitting the leader in the face or the chest, depending on how tall he is. And then you get the reputation as that follower that gives leaders black eyes. And we don't want that. Item number two, look at your partner. Looking at your partner is going to give you great insight into where you're supposed to be going. And now I'm going to share with you one of my most valuable secrets for followers. You don't necessarily need to look at his face. What you want to be mindful of is his right shoulder. So if you're dancing salsa, merengue, bachata, rumba, cha-cha-cha, swing, any of these social dances that require that you make quick direction changes with different complicated leads with the arms, you want to be looking at his right shoulder as that's going to give you the most information about where you're supposed to be going. Item number three, know your rhythm. As leaders, we have to know the rhythm from day one of each dance, otherwise we won't be able to lead. But oftentimes when I'm leading, it becomes abundantly clear that my followers don't actually know the rhythm of the dance that they're, that they're dancing. And it makes it complicated as a leader because I feel like I have to spend a lot of energy just providing my follower with that basic rhythm instead of focusing on enjoying the dance and maybe leading some more fun leads, I have to just stick with my basic steps so that I know that my follower will stay on the beat. So as a follower, I encourage you from the very beginning to really know the rhythms of the dances that you're learning because it will inspire confidence in the leader, which will in turn make you a more desired follower. Item number four, respond to the leader. So frequently, my issue with my followers is that I feel like they are trying to do their step either at the same time as I'm leading it 
or even a little bit before me. This is something we call anticipating, and we really, really don't want to do that when we're following. I always make this analogy. It's as if you're having a conversation with somebody. The leader starts talking, he says what he's going to say, and then you respond. You're not going to cut him off and talk at the same time as him because that's not how a functioning conversation works. And when we are dancing socially, all we're doing is having a conversation with our bodies. So we want to allow the leader to initiate whatever lead he's going to do, and then we will respond. A lot of times my followers tell me that they feel like they're going too slow when they're actually doing this correctly. So an easy way to apply this when you're dancing is try to slow yourself down a little bit and notice when you're getting ahead of the leader. And lastly, number five, stay calm and have fun. We are all going to make mistakes when we're dancing. No leader is perfect, no follower is perfect. Don't get freaked out if you can't follow something that he's led. You just want to keep going, maintaining your rhythm, and maybe he'll try it again and maybe he won't. But you don't need to stress about it because that moment has passed. The more calm and relaxed we stay as followers when we're dancing socially, the more effectively we will be able to receive the information that the leader is giving us. So relax and have fun, and please don't forget to practice the previous four also because they are going to be invaluable tricks for becoming the most desired follower in the room. I hope you enjoy these five tips for becoming the best follower you can be. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more helpful tips like these. Until next time, keep dancing.